Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. We're live. We're on YouTube. Check out the Keith and the Girl channel. It's all right there. Hit subscribe. See our videos. See us, see us live. And after the fact, I'm looking at the, somebody's comment right now. Gerardo writes, I want to throw in my Joker spoiler here. We talked about the movie yesterday. At the end of the movie, Joaquin Phoenix takes off his face paint and moves to Pittsburgh and raises a family and eventually emails Key Sex. <laughs> <laughs> Today's guest, ladies and gentlemen, he's been on the Game Show Network, Oxygen, National Geographic Network, a fantastic comic, your friend, my friend, Calvin Cato. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Calvin. Does anyone not like you? Oh, no, there are people who don't like really? me. Really? Yeah. I feel like I need to meet them. Oh, hold on, I'm reading YouTube. No, people do not like you. <laughs> no, of course, people like Calvin. Calvin was on fairly recently, in fact. but And we I had... never book it back-to-back -back this close. You <laughs> were right. just on, like, last week. I know. <laughs> like, surprise. I feel like this is a shame episode, though. Yeah. <laughs> What well, hasn't even it's been? Like, it's like being asked to be on uh, Jerry Springer. Should I come? I don't know. Yeah, I'm getting final thoughts. Okay, great. <laughs> it's the beginning of October now. It was mid September <laughs> when you were off, and it came up that Hemda, you were impressed about Hemda taking a year to be celibate yes. to say, "Hey, sometimes I'm confusing sex with love, or love with you know regular generic nice to meet you feelings." Uh, let wow, me... Keith really listens sometimes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, I, I just play dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you play so well. You're such a good actor. Thank you. Thank you. And so you're like, oh, maybe I'll look into that too. And maybe I'll be celibate for, mm, what's a nice round number? The end of the month, right? <laughs> so for two weeks. <laughs> okay, very good. And you compared it to us like, <laughs> like we're brothers now. <laughs> right, right. I mean, two, it's a lot of hours, you know? It's, it's like oh. what, like uh, 120 hours plus? Yeah. You know? A lot of hours. Oh, you count when you're sleeping and everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not when you're out in the clubs or something. No dream sex even. I'm just <laughs> right. super celibate. That was the plan. You're on the bathroom and it's like on the toilet and it's like, oh, this is what I'm choosing to do instead now. <laughs> like, well, now that time doesn't count. But all right, Hemda did it for almost a year. You did it for, uh, well, let's see. Uh, Hemda wrote on Twitter, hey, it's the end of the month. You know what? After after Calvin left here when he was like, I'm going to stay celibate for two weeks, I'm like, I'm following up on this asshole. <laughs> And I wrote it on my fucking calendar right. to follow up with you. I was not fucking around. Well, it was on my to-do list. <laughs> it's I like, definitely was going to text you because I was like, I feel like I'm going to break this. But I was like, I think I'm going to stay strong this time. I was really going to do it. This time. Well, you see what the problem is. It's if you were quitting anything. Say you were quitting drinking. You said, I'm quitting drinking, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'd be like, okay, I, I bet you can do it. Oh, I'm going to quit drinking for two weeks. No way you can. No fucking way you can. Thank God it wasn't a leap October, right? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. And this says, did Calvin stay celibate for the last two weeks, like he said, on Keith and the Girl? And she adds you, of course, you know. Yes. Hmm, Calvin. And Calvin said, ha, <laughs> This is laughter that the Joker doesn't even make. Actually, I was going to text you today. Uh, short answer is, I'll have to start over again. Let's, <laughs> let's look at it that way. You know, a shorter answer is no. Right. <laughs> the shortest answer is no. Okay, so I was then, Sorry, then one more. This, this guy, uh, personal lover on mm. Twitter, he writes, mm, the world is so tempting. <laughs> He didn't stand a chance. I went, but the, I was gonna do it, but then I let. When I left your studio, I was outside. <laughs> and then an hour had passed, and right. there were so many more hours. Right. But I am so impressed with how much D you can just receive. Like I, mean, I, you know, it's not like I was, you know, fighting people off for eleven months. I'm almost, <laughs> I'm insulting myself. I was like, no, no problem. <laughs> well, no, this was a, okay. So I talked to my friend about this, and she said that technically you were still celibate because it was like. It was D that I had before. So she was like, it's more of a memory. Uh, um, you had a memory and not like sex. Okay. So I'm going to use that. Do you want me to tell you why that's even <laughs> worse? <laughs> that's much more of a conscious choice and you know it's going to happen. It's not living life seeing what may happen and this happened and maybe yeah. this, this was deliberate. In every way possible. Well, no, it wasn't deliberate. It was accidental. Okay, so, tell us the story. So this I is... have coffee, and I am so <laughs> right? ready. So this is what happened. So I like... really think if you're listening now and you're not like in a brunch mind, <laughs> ooh, get your shit together. Go this ahead. really does feel like a mimosa kind of thing <laughs> that's happening. But okay, so I I done a show and like um it was like at like it was off Broadway. It was like super fun, really nice. 
And this guy. Well, okay, I get there. You go. You, you know, don't even need more. You're horny. <laughs> when you do good, it's good, right? It was. It was good. It was yeah. like a political action thing. So oh. it's like. Oh. <laughs> This is all coming in. Why didn't you tweet that? We didn't even need to see you today. Political action. <laughs> Off Broadway. It, you do a good show, but for a good cause. And now let's drop loads. <laughs> okay, wait. But, okay. like, there was a real... <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. It was important. No, it's important. <laughs> Politicals. Cody Allen is saying what had happened was. <laughs> right. That's, okay, here's the story. Exactly. The story's in quotes. But, like, y'all don't understand. See, what had, but, like, what had really had happened? Right. So, oh, like, what had really Really happened. Okay. That flows off the tongue. Go ahead, liar. This is this is this is how I told my mom that I wasn't in a club and I was right. just hanging out with a friend. Uh-huh. I had okay. I had a I had a short skirt in my backpack anyway. Okay. Well, in case of emergencies, right. you know, you never know. So like, so he came to the show, um, okay. and I didn't know. And then he texted me, "Oh, I came to the show." And I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." Like, Somebody you had sex with in the past. Yes. Okay. The, the memory. Yeah. And so, yeah. so he was like, "You don't know his name, do you?" <laughs> <laughs> I definitely know his name. Okay, all right. I know his name. I believe you. <laughs> that is just hurtful. <laughs> I remember most of their names. Okay. All right, I'll stand correct. And that I got a good descriptor. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I know his name. He's a very lovely gentleman. Right. Um, and so we, I, I hadn't spoken to him in a while because last time I talked to him, this was actually kind of awkward. His uh, dick was in my mouth, <laughs> and it's like, aw. <laughs> it's like trying to talk at the dentist. <laughs> Did you know? Actually, no, it was even more awkward. So the last time I talked to him, every so every December, his church puts on a show, and then he like was like, oh, I, um, this came up during one of the times when we had a liaison. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, you do stand-up, right? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, hey, do you want to do this church show? And I was like, isn't this weird because we, you know. Or anti-church, probably. Right. Oh no, he's super pro-church. Like this okay. church is really awesome. Like they're very like pro-LGBTQ, and oh, okay. they're like a Muslim haven for or haven for immigrants and stuff. And so he had booked me on that show. That was the last time I spoke to him. So I did his show, and there was a guy who came to the church, who I didn't even know still lived in the neighborhood, but it's someone who I had sex with like four years ago. And then he came, and it, I just was really awkward, and was like, I just got through my set and leave because this is too much like old dick in the room. Right. And it was it was weird because then it was at a church and you can't really say anything. So like he came up to me. I was almost, almost gonna say his real name. Uh, he was like, "Oh hey, haven't I met you before?" And I was like, "Yeah, we have. You still live on Ninety Fifth Street." And then it dawned on him. He's like, "Oh my God, yes, I do know you. Right. How are you?" Is or, this before you were set? Uh, no, this is thankfully after the okay. sex. I didn't know this until I was on stage and I was like, "Oh, there's let's say Adam." I was like, oh, that's Adam. Oh, my God, that's Adam. What is he doing here? I guess he's also religious. Yeah. A lot of church gays in my neighborhood. Just interesting. You picked the most religious name. I know. <laughs> you could have picked Steve. I know, yeah. <laughs> Let's call him Joseph. <laughs> so, so that was the last time I saw him. So I felt a little awkward because um, I, I did the set and like the church people were like, oh, you're really nice. Like, how do you know uh, Ezekiel? And, <laughs> <laughs> and And how did you know Moses? <laughs> very biblically apparently <laughs> and so they kept asking how do you know ezekiel and uh i was like oh we just somehow met in entertainment together and it was just getting more and more awkward and i was like i think i should go and ezekiel was like yeah go 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 and so he came so anyway so cut to but aren't they pro gay shit like what's the problem i mean they are but they're not pro like oh you met on grinder and then you got this guy to do stand up at our church There's also so they're di- not good with gay shit <laughs> I mean, no, they're good with it. There's a difference between pro and we tolerate. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are pro it. It just is like there were a lot of just like older people there. And like okay. I don't want to have to explain to this like 60 year old like what they're pro about. Because <laughs> 60 is so fucking old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I, I think about that when I th- think about my dad. Like, OK, do I have to take his age into account? But then I see celebrities on TV and I'm like. This guy's 80-something. He's making complete sense. Yeah. But also, do you remember when our age was there yeah. old? Like, at, at our age, we were giving people passes. Like, oh, well, they're just old. Yeah. Right. But I don't think I should get a pass because I'm old. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not even that they're like... Down with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't even that. It's just more a matter of, like, they're just not, like, they wouldn't share about sex stuff. Mm-hmm. And so you're, I not, just, you're like, not trying to be like we hooked up one time. Exactly. Okay. Like I didn't want to be like that, and like they wouldn't really get it. So they're like, oh, did you two like date? And it's like we there was no dating involved. Right. So I didn't want to explain all that. So then, yeah, adults don't know what a hookup is. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be so confused. Yeah, no. 
<laughs> you just hung out in rooms? It's a <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they obviously had affairs and yeah. one times and hookups. Yeah, but, you know, they would say things like dalliances or like yeah. things like that. So anyway, so he came to the show. And um, and then he texted me. He's like, oh, I had to leave early. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. And he's like, hey, you know, I just was like, you know, really impressed. And it was really nice to see you again. Would you want to like come over to my place and have a drink? And so I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Thinking like, well, we were going to have a drink. Um, and <laughs> Calvin, G- give me. <laughs> Did you clean up your place for this drink? <laughs> Did you have to fluff the pillows for he this? He went over there. I went over to his place. Oh, okay. For a drink. Yeah. Um, Okay, you know, in fairness, but like... But th- these New York City prices, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Can we just pick up a whole bottle for the same price as a martini and go to your house, living room, bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> it did kind of go in that order, actually, yeah. <laughs> let, let me explain to you the restaurant scam. <laughs> they make their money on this overpriced booze. Let's just go to your house. <laughs> just cut to the chase. They just, and they water down anyway. It's so much ice, yeah, you I'm, know? it's. I'll tip and shaft you. <laughs> Okay, so you went on this totally innocent drink thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I went, I went, I had a drink at his place. Uh, we were sitting out. We were what just was sh- the drink? I don't know why it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it does. He got this, it was like this really nice like raspberry liqueur that he got from, um because he's from Maine. So it was like some Maine thing. And it was really good. What I was going to, I was going to say why, but from Maine? Okay. Yeah, it's from Maine. Okay. What do you do with raspberry liqueur? I drink it and then. You drink it in shots and try to forget that you shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> What's liqueur actually? Just a side note. What is liqueur? Is it like, like, <laughs> is it like dalliances? <laughs> I know, it sounds it sounds overtly sweet, but I'm yeah. not really sure. It sounds like you're supposed to mix it with something. Yeah, I think it is like it's something that like you mix. Did you mix it? N- oh, no. <laughs> okay. We got to the bottom of it. <laughs> I did. No. Yeah, because we, we drank a, a fair bit of it yeah, and we were right. talking and like. He, he does music, so we were talking about his music career, and right. I was talking about, like, doing stand-up, and then SNL was on, and it was a repeat, and so we were kind of bored, and then he goes, you know, I was when you were on stage, I was just thinking, like, wow, I just can't believe I haven't fucked that kid in so long. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. So he cut <laughs> straight to the chase, right. and I was like, ah, well, you know, right. and then I forgot the celibacy thing, and then we had to So what did, what did, what did you know end with <laughs> <laughs> I mean it was more like again it was a memory thing where I was like oh yeah it also had been a while since we had sex and like it, it was you know like it was like okay, okay, all right. reliving past <laughs> sex save it for the church <laughs> <laughs> reliving past sex <laughs> I mean have you never done that before where you're like oh I'm just curious if like we had been intimate before and I wanted to make sure like is the quality like the same let's say or? you're with somebody yeah okay mm-hmm. and it's understood you're monogamous let's say yeah and you cheat on him but I don't even want to use that word because it's a memory <laughs> <laughs> You get what I'm saying. Technically, Keith and I get to fuck whenever we want. <laughs> it doesn't count. Yeah, it's a memory. It's a memory. But Kyle, it's a memory. I've already done it, so it's like... It's kind of it's lame. It's kind of like a re- re- repeated SNL. <laughs> <laughs> I learned nothing new. I actually, I have slept with an old ex before. Never a good idea. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did one of you have feelings, or was it just like... Um, if I think I've definitely done it when I wasn't done with my feelings because maybe we had just broken up and I'm like, oh, this could work again. Oh. But also, like, years later, I'm like, oh, I remember we had, like, good chemistry. And I was like, oh, right. no, I was just young. Oh, <laughs> yes. You know, I was just like, oh, he's uh, like, I remember maybe someone being good in bed. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be like a guaranteed sure thing. And then I was like, oh, no, I just didn't know anything. So your moves were like. I guess good. <laughs> and then, it, you know, then you start noticing like, oh, you only date young people. Ooh. Oh, that's why you think you're good in bed. And that's why they think you're good in bed. Oh, fuck. But is that, isn't that better? Yeah, it's good. Because then, then it, it's like, oh, I'm done thinking about yeah, you. Like yeah. in any way, shape or form. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. This guy still have it? Good uh, memory? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was... Hold on. This show title is Memory Loss. I know. I'm already, writing it down. I know you wrote Memory. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote down good memory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I mean, it was. I will say, it was like very like intense, like passionate sex. It did feel really good. Right. That's fun. And so it was. But then when we were done. It was very like a okay. I mean, I know I could do this, and like I would do this again, and maybe like nine months or something you speaking know. of memory. But why nine months why why isn't that like yes maybe i have a fuck buddy now this is intense it's nice it's cordial it's uh i mean he lives too far and like uh-huh. uh, i want to be a gay man <laughs> no, i really you do because you can just lie about everything it, no. <laughs> he doesn't like him enough <laughs> he's say. too far oh i see oh okay <laughs> he stays in no, new york obviously oh. no i do i think i just want to be a dude it sounds like yeah, <laughs> he doesn't go to maine often for this liqueur <laughs> he's in new york too far <laughs> no, but he is far. I mean, like, cause <laughs> it's not on the same line. Don't put words in my mouth. You got to go to a separate he's... subway <laughs> to be with somebody you're into. God forbid you got to take two subways <laughs> when you when you want to bone someone who's good at it. It's like, like a monologue as to why I'm still alone and single. <laughs> <laughs> it's so terrible. I just think if, like, you have chemistry with some... Man, I'm not saying exclusively and now he's your boyfriend. I'm saying, like... In the mix. Of yeah. course. Well, but we, you're saying nine months, which means you're just getting laid right, left, and right. Well, no, no. Well, that happened, and then um, I started hooking back up with the guy who I was also hooking up with like eight months ago. Is this so all why. within two weeks? Because fuck you. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then I, for, and then I forgot I'm sorry. again. <laughs> you didn't forget, by the way. You knew, and you went, fuck it. You didn't forget. <laughs> we were in your head, and you know it. This is amazing. <laughs> This is amazing. But this is like not a normal thing. This is just okay. a weird, the, the leaves are turning. You know and like, how I know this is a normal thing? Because you're like, I wonder if I could be celibate for two weeks. <laughs> right. Like if you were like, oh, every once in a while I have good sex, be like, yeah, I can be celibate for a while. Yeah. Anybody else says the opposite. I hope I get a date in two weeks. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, Please wow. nobody tempt me in two weeks. <laughs> good two. for you. I mean. What is it about you, you think? Was I mean, a- you are a delight, but I'm not having sex with you. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go more than one train. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I also, like, I, I feel like I try to, like, have a lot of good conversation. Like, I don't, like, uh-huh. just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, me too. I fucking run a podcast. <laughs> I have good conversation is what I do for a living. It's on my business card. But you're di- discerning. Like, you have standards. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you Thank do. You. Shout out to Xerxes. And it- <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're at, like, let's say the church, and they say, how do you know this person? Do you go, ah, memories. Yeah. <laughs> Good, you should say I that. will now. And they go, well, we know that. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you know, you are so honest that you couldn't even find a lie where, and it took me this long. I'm like, oh, you know what you could have said? Like, first of all, anything. Second, <laughs> it, like you said, Keith, a memory. Oh, I don't remember. He just right. looks familiar, and I know we met somewhere. I, I forget. Yeah. But why don't I? I can't think of that stuff when I got to, like, think ahead. Which oh, just really? sounds like he left this group of old people. Like, it's a lot for me right now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we figured it out just the same. Wow. <laughs> you guys wow, are wow. fucking. Wow. So since then, have you hooked up? Has it been three business days? <laughs> I have not had sex since Thursday. But this is the guy who... Let me mention it's Monday. No matter what day you're listening to this, <laughs> but this is 72 whole hours. It's Keith is right that it's not three business days. <laughs> wait, so you haven't had sex since Thursday? So oh wait, no, Friday morning. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> but that's like a continue. If you want to like yeah. count hours wise, I mean, it was. If like, you're gonna count that <laughs> as being inside a person's body <laughs> and vice versa, then okay, then count that. <laughs> to me, it's a continuation of a memory from eight years ago. <laughs> Continuation of last night. <laughs> this morning. It's an count. ongoing memory. You know, there's short term memories and there's long term memories. Right. And this is a long term memory <laughs> that I was having. There's a lot of people sitting at home, like, how do I become Calvin? <laughs> yeah. Did you go off your diet? I saw you eating a bunch of donuts, first of all. I had donuts when I was 18. <laughs> so that's a memory. Yeah. And then donuts again the next morning is just donuts. So I had donuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you're watching, like, say you're watching, uh-huh. like, and. and <laughs> You gonna <laughs> double down on this? Oh it's like say you're watching Netflix, but you like leave it running, and so it's like you're still watching Netflix. No, no Netflix has you if you're still there, and you have to acknowledge it. You can't fool a machine, and you can't fool us. All right, let me let me ask you this: Do okay. you do you feel satiated or satisfied in any way? Um, whether it be like immediately after the day after, or in your memory thought. 
Um, I do when it's good sex. I do feel like good and it's nice to make that sort of connection. And it feels great when I'm like, oh, this is fun and I can do this and also have a conversation with you outside of just yes. a sexual context. Context, But, you know, like, well, that was part of the reason why I wanted to be celibate in the first place was because I was like, I just feel like I'm like doing too much. And I was like, I want to like write or like read. And how do you feel after that? Did you make a mistake? Were you happy with it? Oh, no. That, I mean, with this guy, I actually am happy with it. Okay. Um, although I do hope it leads to something more. So I'm kind of like more happy with that guy. This the guy who I Friday morning. Yeah. Mm. Thursday night, Friday morning guy. Is Thursday night, Friday morning new or a memory? Uh, that's another memory. <laughs> Okay. You got a big fucking brain, right, bro. It's <laughs> <laughs> got wrinkles from here to Chinatown. <laughs> Good for you. You get the, you take an IQ test and you're like, wrong. The number's higher. Trust me. <laughs> I got. It doesn't account for memory. Are you on Grinder at all right now? Um. Yes. I mean, I'm still on Grinder and Scruff, but like not as much since I'm trying to like actually take this seriously with Thursday night, Friday morning guy. What's not as much since Thursday night, Friday morning? I mean, I went on like twice. I swear to God. Oh my God. You didn't even turn off notifications. <laughs> I don't think you know how life is. <laughs> I'm a monster. <laughs> what do you want me to say? No, I mean, I have, I have good feelings about this, <laughs> but also I don't think you know what it's like <laughs> for some people. Okay. I mean, well, it's not like I'm hooking up like every day or even every week. And like, here's what's going to happen. I'll go, do you hook up every day, every <laughs> week? And you go, yeah. <laughs> no, I actually, no, not every day. Uh huh. Or every, well, I mean, but wait the past, it out, folks. <laughs> wait. Well, the, the past couple of weeks it sounds like a lot of sex, but then before that, it was a good like. I swear to God, if you say five days, no, <laughs> nine, nine days, nine or ten or seven. No, like right. 10 or 10. 9 10. or 10 days. Okay. He, he counts. Do you know that you're saying 9 or 10 days is a long time with new dick? <laughs> okay. Yes, Keith. Like what? He's counting like, you know, five. He's counting different time zones and then going back. Right. And, yeah. 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 If, mean, you, I, if you visit Maine and come back and have sex with him, right. that's like a different state. It, it is. Yeah. And it's an area code thing. But and no, you're, you're a different person <laughs> because you've experienced more things. I will say this. I have not had new dick in a good, like, three months. Okay. So, like, it's all, like, memories, <laughs> really. You know what's you good? Calvin's it. never going to shoot up a theater. <laughs> <laughs> right. You have to have empty balls. <laughs> to, and, <laughs> and he's just fine in that regard. So we're not worried about shootings. What do you look for in someone? Uh, someone. <laughs> <laughs> that was really picky. Schnapps. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, I mean, I like, well, um, I do like guys who are like, are older and a bit like, kind of refined, but also know what they're doing. You know, like, I, I, I kind of like, oh, why am I James so Bond. Much? You like like an NPR oh, yeah. guy? No, no, not like an NPR, but yeah, like a James Bond. And like, oh, you're like the one a, who likes an NPR guy, a, a James, James Bond, Bond guy. Yeah. Not like, yeah, James Bond, you're like someone who's like a little Tom like, Cruise. <laughs> Ugh, no, <laughs> definitely not. Like a, Br or a Bruce Willis type or like a Patrick Warburton. Like basically someone who's like authoritative and like. Okay. And gruff a little? Yeah, a little gruff, yeah. But gruff and knowledgeable, is that what we're getting yeah, at? Yeah, gruff and knowledgeable. Okay. Like kind of like. Because you're very smart. Like, Thank I you. know that, like... Really? Because none of these words made sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have, like, tons of easy access to information in your brain that I feel like you have a good memory. You can <laughs> access it really... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know. You can access it really quick. Yeah. You have good references. Um, so I imagine to hold your interest and to keep you engaged verbally might be more challenging. It's I, I I don't know why it's such, and a that's why thing. I feel so good about me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? No, 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 no you're right. <laughs> Again, like I, it's, I feel like, and it may just be like a response to like my parents because my parents were like so into like me being like more intellectual and stuff, and I feel like I just fall for a lot of like weird like blue collar men. Like if you're mm -hmm. like an erudite trucker i'm just like yes like it's just weird it seems more maybe down to earth yeah but like uh, just and real did your parents what relationship do you have with your parents uh not a great one okay <laughs> i mean my dad was a registered nurse and my mom was um an executive assistant secretary but they were both immigrants so they, from where um the west indies so my dad's from jamaica my mom's from haiti and so, like, in general, like, I feel like I was always seen as, like, the stock option for them. Like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to make sure you're a doctor. you got to be a doctor. So that's what I was studying for years before I was just like, I, this isn't really for me. And so then I got into, like, stand-up and stuff. And 
I, I imagine they looked down on the blue collar situation because they didn't move from blah 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 to be blah blah blah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a very classic immigrant thing of like, well, we spend all this money and time and we put so much energy into getting here so the fact that like you do this hurts us so you know what i realized about me because like i also have the the immigrant parents and the um they really they really are like if you're not on a pedestal for this world whatever world we created then we failed and we don't like you anymore so there's that but what i learned is because of the quietness and the overbearing and the like you know push towards this thing that, that didn't seem very honest to me um when somebody, when I became an adult and people talked very openly and clearly and, and uh, like gruff and, you know, with the language that is, is, it made sense to use, not like this circle around sort of language, I was so attracted to that. But what I didn't realize is they're saying some horrible shit. Yeah. And I am attracted to it because at least it's real. Where my parents, like, you fight and then the next day nobody talks about it and, like, just keep going and you're on a track and whatever. This sidetrack was like, oh, he's saying fucked up shit. Like, this is attractive. And I'm like, I forget that he's also saying fucked up shit, not just being honest and real. And that confused me. I no, I that- totally agree with that. Because it is true. Because it's like, I feel like it's a very similar thing where it's like there was so much, there was always like just weird tension in the household. And like, we would get into explosive fights, but then literally we'd just be like, oh yeah, and that just never happened. And mm-hmm. for me, it was always so bothersome because I'm like, no, this did happen and we should talk about it. So when that happens and people are honest, it doesn't, it almost doesn't matter that they're saying like actually fucked up shit to you. Yeah. It's like, well, at least we're talking like, like for real, for real. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad, bad news. Yeah. And tough when, you know, your parents have a job, let's say registered nurse. Now, obviously, you can't register nurse something yourself. You're not going to do a stitching job on somebody. But <laughs> he's able to tell a joke, and it might not be so bad. It won't be as clever, but it won't be bad. You're not, you're not kind of nursing half-ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, so he thinks yeah. he can do what you do, but you can't do what he, he does, and that's yeah. a shame. Yeah. It's really rough because immigrant parents, they're right. They're like, we did this big, giant thing, and you can't even do this little thing after you've been handed a silver platter. And it's like, right. I don't think we came here to do you since you keep saying we came here for me. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I'm not following this storyline. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, speaking of apps, I'm reading a story about a man, a Russian man. He downloaded an app onto his iPhone. They don't say what app it was, but some kind of a money conversion app because he wanted to buy bitcoins, he says. He's suing Apple. Because the app changed his lifestyle and made him homosexual. He oh. claims that he received hmm. a message after gaining a certain amount of cryptocurrency coins. He wanted Bitcoin. He got gay coins. <laughs> One more, gay coins. I want gay coins. On Me a too. payment app he just downloaded. It falls on you like confetti. <laughs> he then received a message telling him, don't judge without try. So I'm not sure exactly what that means. Now he claims to have a steady boyfriend and is at a loss to how to explain the boyfriend's existence to his family. Good. I love this because for everybody in government and everybody in power who says it's a choice and it happens to you, give him his money. This fucking (laughs) happened to him. Oh, well, I guess this is how it happens. Keep your kids away. The man claims it is the app, not his decision to explore sexuality, that changed his life irrevocably. I love it. And says he cannot return to a normal heterosexual life. I love it. I think everyone on any queer spectrum should blame like, I don't know, the A&P mm. supermarket or like, <laughs> right. you know, down the block, the pizzeria or my teacher in fourth grade. And then it's like, you wanted a reason. We all have a reason now. Shut it down. Yeah. Everybody's canceled. Exactly. Yeah, picture the boyfriend, though. He's like, do you love me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you're still going to sue the app? Oh, yeah. It's the principle, my love. <laughs> Uh, Guan Yin on our YouTube is listening live. The KTG app made me gay as well. You know what? Another good reason to get the Keith and the Girl <laughs> right. app. Fucking, that is wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> w- would you find yourself, when you would date mm-hmm. or have sex with people or memories, all this stuff, <laughs> <laughs> would, would you have sex with a guy who you find out afterwards is in the closet or embarrassed about having gay sex and it kind of ruins the day? Did that ever happen? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, th- I feel like that happens more on, like, uh, like Grinder or Scrap. Oh, God, I can't. Okay, so this is, like, way back in the day. I used to use Craigslist, uh, which was. Oh, high- so did my husband. 
husband while we Wait. were married. Oh, oh. Mm. Yeah, that's what I said. Yikesy. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, I got my divorce papers. Yeah. <laughs> we're going like, to celebrate. Uh, the ex said, I have memories? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kenda was not buying it. She was in a mood. <laughs> They've they've since shut down that part of Craigslist. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know too. <laughs> <laughs> we know for different reasons, yeah. but are they different? I know. I was like, it's really parallel. It's really the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so, like, so what happened on this date? Um, it, so we uh, he came over to my place and then we hooked up. And what kind we, of what kind of ad are we talking about? Um, so I posted an ad. I I'm sure I have it saved somewhere, but it was something like generically like whatever. Looking for black cherry liqueur. <laughs> you know, you know these code words everybody uses. I was, you know, it's like usually you give like a description and then you're like, this is my description. Um, I'm just looking for, you know, fun. And uh, yeah, I think it's like DDF looking for fun. That's DDF. it. DDF. Drug That's... and disease free. free. Oh, oh, I would have thought I meant down the fuck and I would have brought so many drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I just learned what BBC means. Right. Wait, you don't know BBC? I mean, okay, listen. I was watching, I was looking through the porn. <laughs> the porn. <laughs> <laughs> and it kept saying, like, BBC on some of the things. And I'm like, oh, we're deciphering between British and American. <laughs> okay. The and news I, in England is yeah. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, how come all the British guys on here are black, potentially? <laughs> and then I was like, this can't be. I must be thinking stupid. <laughs> for, for, for In my defense, I did not click on anything. I figured it out myself. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> That's where you had to, like, Google it or, like, go to Urban Dictionary. And you're like... oh, I took a second. <laughs> well, her and Xerxes were sleeping, and she pops up, Big Black Cock! <laughs> right, honey? Big Black Cock. Good night. <laughs> I told that story to Xerxes, and he's like, you're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but keep that between us. Yeah. <laughs> That's so adorable. Thank you, thank you. You know what BBW is? Wait. Fuck. Big black women? Um, Close. Change a second B. Big booty women. Mm. Big butt? Don't look at me. I'm not guessing. <laughs> This is going to go south fast. Yeah, there's not a good idea. It's like be, big, beautiful women. Okay. So, like, if you're, like, into, like, oh. a voluptuous type, BBW. Oh, but you didn't okay. have to make it racial, Henda. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about her. Oh, no, apparently being British is racial. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> so you're on Craigslist. Oh, yeah. So, um, so um, I put out, like, I was like, yeah, I'm looking for someone, like, you know, older, uh, NSA, no strings attached. And so, uh, a picture or no picture? Oh, know? I never put up a picture. Oh, well, my ex husband did while we were married. Oh, that's just stupid. Yeah, with his face and everything. No. Cut me out of some pictures. <gasps> yes. I love this response. <laughs> it's just soothing. What? what did you say NSA stands that's, for? Uh, no strings attached. I, I think you're just calling attention to the NSA. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, man, people are making it easier and easier. Well, this is getting shut down. This doesn't seem right. I also want you to know that both Andrea and our listeners knew it was big, beautiful women. So uh, five go. points each to anyone who guessed. Thank you for being there, YouTube Live. Uh huh. Okay, so, so somebody answered it. What did they say? Um, so we answered. Um, it was a very like you know state response. Like, yeah, like that's what I'm looking for. I'm into this. What's your address? I give my address. FBI, S C U V A. P.O. Box, all of that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so he comes over to my place, and like he's like, oh, he was like a really tall guy, maybe like six two, six three, like with like a couple tattoos. He was like jacked, and it's like, okay, cool, like let's do this. And so we start having sex. Wait, with... did you not see a picture before? Did you guys exchange? Um, pictures? he exchanged like a chest down pic, but okay. like I never trust those because it's like people lie on those all the okay. time, or they're like, oh, like I got this at an angle or from twenty years ago. And so, like, he, he came over. He was, like, jacked. He was really hot. And so we have sex. And literally as soon as he finished, he goes, I'm sorry. I turned straight right after sex. And then he, like, tri- put on his clothes and left. And I was like, mm. what the fuck? I this is- turned straight right after sex. Now, does that make you feel like a piece of shit? Because he's obviously saying what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. I mean, I did feel, like, really shitty about it. And I was like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. And so, Damn. Like, was, was he, like, into it during? That was, like, he, like, literally, like, he came over. We, like, barely even talked. We just, like, started making out and, like, just getting into it. 
So that's why I was so surprised that it, like it was like literally like a switch. Like he's like, oh yeah, no, I came, I'm done. I just this is not for me. Da 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 da. That's how I feel after I watch porn. I'm like, oh, I came. I don't know why I'm watching. This. <laughs> Do you tell him well that this is gonna make tomorrow's morning sex awkward? <laughs> Don't worry, shh, shh, it's just a memory. <laughs> right, <patting> his head. <laughs> oh, that's the uh, worst. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, I mean, it's so weird. It just happens. And I feel like a lot of times, that's why I always get so frustrated with people where it's like, I feel like sexuality is such a spectrum. And I feel like if people were more comfortable with that, you know, the world would just be a better place. If you're just like, look, like, I maybe I'm mostly straight, but I just like, you know, putting a dick in someone's butt in a while or like getting a dick in my butt or whatever. Like, I think that would be so so fantastic and i know that it could happen because we kind of gave women the permission to do that and we ran with it a little bit like because it was more open for women to do it more women have that experience and it doesn't make you gay right. yeah <laughs> but it, i get how it doesn't make you straight but i don't know yeah. it's just you licked something <laughs> you know <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like you got ice cream. It's like, I know I like vanilla Swiss almond. I fucking know I like it. Maybe I'll try the Oreo Crunch or whatever. And then it's like, you know what? The Oreo Crunch is still ice cream, but I'm going to stick with the vanilla Swiss almond. I'm just nervous it's getting it's racial again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if we gave permission, more people would be like, I don't know. I was horny. Yeah, and then also just helps you be, be more understanding of like people of different sexualities, where you're like, oh, okay, like I get that, and I also understand that there's a difference between like having sex with someone versus like being in a romantic relationship with someone versus like any number of like permutations of friendships or relationships. And this, I don't know if this is really true, but maybe it would help to be like, oh, this is what it's like dating my sex. Like this is what it's like. Like let's say if I'm in a straight relationship and I and I go with a woman. I'm like, and maybe I'm like with her for a while. I don't think that that should represent all women, but you kind of can start seeing like, oh, this is what we're working with. Or I don't know. It just there's so much empathy there. There's so much like understanding there that it's such a good idea. Everyone fuck something. Yeah. Right now, a chair, <laughs> anything. <laughs> Blame oh an app. <laughs> I'm less worried about a Joker shooting. <laughs> uh, do do guys have tricks when they go on dates? Like, let's say a woman could stuff a bra or put on makeup that doesn't really represent her. Do guys have any anything they can do? Uh, Ooh, pay. Good question. Pay for a lot of things. That's the trick. Okay. I mean, because like, huh. there's no, it's. I mean, like, there's no real like trick it's not like you're gonna put on Spanx or anything right like i feel like it's usually just a matter of like there's no cod pieces and then you get home no. <laughs> <laughs> although i'm sure that probably happens like i'm sure there are guys who like will like right. wear like because there's like a certain kind of underwear you can wear that like makes your butt look better mm. so you could do that and wear it backwards yeah <laughs> <laughs> my balls look better <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Like, what? How could a guy primp? Right. To and then you. Well, you guys are hiding your main event all the time. Like, you know how big someone's boobs are. Not Keith, but your average person <laughs> right. knows. But we never know what you're packing. That is true. Yeah. Because I mean, no one's also wearing tight enough pants where you're like, oh, I can see. Even still, the growing really? aspect of it oh. is. Just it makes everything invalid. Like <laughs> it's I mean, that thing is magical. I grow it but then I go, Okay, that's it. What are you waiting for? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's not a fucking beanstalk, it's my penis. <laughs> Let me mention this. Third love, speaking of bras. <laughs> Third love uses data points generated by millions of women who have taken their fit finder quiz to design bras with breast size and shape in mind for a perfect fit and premium feel. Here's what I'm talking about. A bra company that offers more than 80 sizes, including their signature half cup size. Who knew that was a thing? I didn't. Women, I guess, knew. But <laughs> this is the life they had to live. You know, uh, do I put in tissue and go one higher? Do I, you know, just ruin my whole day and go one size smaller than I really need? Now you have your half sizes. Over 80, over 80 sizes? That's incredible. <laughs> over 14 million women have taken the quiz to date. It's a fun quiz. takes less, less than a minute on your computer, and you'll know your correct breast shape, the correct size you need, and again, you know, they go with they have every little increment that you need. And I don't know if you know this, but like, I don't, I don't know if you guys have heard, but women really do talk about this. They do talk about having the experience of going to the store and then going like, oh, wow, I'm a whole different size, yep. or, you know, they are buying a size, and then the store person is like, 
you're buying the wrong size and they have to like feel you up in the dressing room and, and get your yeah. own size. It's, it's embarrassing and weird. And also, by the way, Third Love, um, that's the only bra that doesn't fall off my shoulder, which is, you know, it's like picking out a wedgie right. and like, yeah. you know, however you guys adjust your balls. It's like doing <laughs> that in public. I don't have to do that when I have Third Love on. You have 60 days to wear it, wash it, put it to the test. If you don't love it, return it. They wash it and donate it to a woman in need. There's no way to lose. That's really nice. Yeah. Yes. I love, it's, it's amazing. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering you 15% off your first order. Now here's, now, okay, that's the pros, Keith. Where are the cons? Here's, here's a con. Okay. I have to be honest. Uh, you know that joy you get, women, after you wear your bra <laughs> for 14 hours and you take it off? And you're like, oh, I feel like a human goddamn being. <laughs> yeah, and, and then if like somebody calls you and has like the best tickets for anything, it's like, no, I already took off my bra. Right. It's over. <laughs> you won't be able to enjoy that feeling anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You'll be comfortable all day long. <laughs> Go to thirdlove.com slash KTG now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash KATG. Get 15% off. Also, thank today. you for supporting our supporters. I know sometimes we get emails saying like, hey, I bought the third love bra or I bought, you know, whatever else mm -hmm. that we'd like sleep number bed. It keeps the show going. So thank you. If you're going to buy a bra, check it out. Thirdlove.com slash K-A-T-G. I'm reading a story about a woman in Tampa, Florida, set a world record for longest nail extensions at four feet. Why? This but, is such a Tampa, Florida thing. <laughs> yeah, this does God. not impress me because you did, you're not growing your nails four feet. It's fake nails. Yeah. So but still, I mean, that's a lot of nail glue that she has to use. But, <laughs> okay, I'm going five feet. Fuck you. I'm telling you, one day, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break all the dumb records. It is when, if Keith ever wins the lotto, <laughs> like, this is the shit he's going to yeah. be committed to. He's D like, oh, are you happy about your nails? Now you're not. Yeah. And yeah. I don't even care about this. I just have the time. Longest calzone. Oh, add an inch to that. Fuck him. <laughs> You know, I'm reading about a world record. Hey, that's going to be his version of thank you next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> and the biggest hamburger, you taught me patience. <laughs> An Idaho man who has broken more than 100 Guinness World Records has broken another, this time for furthest tortilla throw. That I can appreciate. I'm curious, is it corn? Is it flour? But that's <laughs> a skill. How did he break 100? Let me tell you something. Also, who set that record in the first place? No one. <laughs> He, he dropped it on the ground. It's a record. 54 feet, 5 inches is his record. I don't know how Guinness works. We tried to work with Guinness one time because we've had, I think, the longest running talk show marathons that we could ever find, yes, right? Yeah. And so we 76 want, hours. Yeah, and we wanted to contend um, with if there was something longer, we'll go longer, you know, all this shit. Right. We looked up Guinness. Holy shit. First of all, it's going to cost, I think, thousands yeah. of dollars. Wait, it costs get. money? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to, oh. amongst other things, first of all, you have to qualify for something I don't know, but I don't know how we wouldn't qualify. Right. Um, we would only be able to take one bathroom break like every three hours, including shitting, peeing, whatever. Um, they need a timekeeper, and it can't be you. It has to be a, an official Guinness, and they get paid a certain amount. And they get paid also. Yeah, so they get paid that much, and you have to be responsible for them showing up and being there and whatever. And it was like so many things that I'm like, what's the difference if we get Guinness or just do this do and it. have fun? Right. <laughs> yeah, like we're still doing it. Right. Like the only time I would want the Guinness thing I get, I, there is something cool about that yearly book they have. I always give it as gifts. Yeah, but remember, it was a Guinness <laughs> that when um, What's-His-Face came out with a podcast, Gervais, mm -hmm. he hit a million downloads and they were like, well, this is on record. And we were like, we hit millions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like at that point, we were like, they, they didn't even. And you figure like, and there weren't the amount of podcasts. There were like a few thousand. Yeah. At, and right now there's like a thousand new ones every day. Yeah. Right. No exaggeration. And so we're like, they didn't even add. There was only like one, only like Libsyn, Liberated Syndication that hosts it. Right. They ask them. Ask them. Like they have the measurements. They have the matrix. The metrics. They didn't ask anyone. They just said, oh, man, that's a lot. Mm, mm, I can believe Ricky Gervais. Yeah. I can yeah. believe that. Done. Right. That's so yeah. ridiculous. Done. And we had to like watch the news going like, oh. I, I don't want to take it away from like a person who worked hard and, and how did petty, the work. And, and how petty does right. it sound? I mean, at least put us and Ricky side by side and make us throw tortillas. Yeah. <laughs> Something I, I love Ricky, but there's something you could have done. But it took it really took away from the Guinness word, from the Guinness right. uh, historical value, yeah. because 
it wasn't that difficult at the time. I think now with all the different networks and all the different hosting places, it's very hard to really find out who has the downloads. But then we knew. Right. Yeah. We knew. And I, I could tell just contact Robert Lipson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a new person who got arrested over the college scandal. You know, the parents that pay mm. for their kids to get into a college or to up their SAT scores. Turns out everyone in Harvard. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Felicity Huffman was the big name. Right? It's gonna two be whole weeks. Oh, no. Two weeks. Uh, she, she paid $15,000 to get her daughter's SAT scores up. She got a fine of thirty thousand dollars and the two weeks, of course. Like now, will she will it be a real two weeks or a Calvin two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> right? Who knows? Who knows? How about a memory of she gets to visit her pool again? <laughs> Honestly, two weeks is so insulting. I feel like I yeah. would have rather she paid more in a fine because two weeks in jail is nothing. Well, what should have been the test is when the the she says, "I'm so contrite." I'll even I'll say it in front of cameras. I'm sorry. Whatever you think I should do, I'll do. I apologize. And they go one month, and she goes, "No." And I <laughs> talk to my lawyers, and they went, "No, that was the trick. You say yes one month, and you get none. Yeah. Not one month. No, but not that. Two yeah. weeks. Okay, two weeks." I think it's funny that you say she she'd rat, like you'd prefer she paid, but I think fifteen thousand, thirty thousand, even a hundred thousand won't make a dent. But two weeks of your freedom taken when those jail cells close on you. I think it's a different thing. But it's like a minimum security prison. It's not like she's going to like, you know, Oz right. prison. Like she's <laughs> no, going to like fucking. She's got to like... put glass into this <laughs> food to stay alive. Yeah. But that's the thing. She's it's not like, like we're, we're, we're making people go to prison so that they can, you know, uh, have trouble getting not getting raped and not getting beat up. It's it is a confinement of bars in front of you and you don't have your freedom. I think we think of sex as like this torture sex. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon. Shout out to Xerxes. I think that we see, you know, jail as this torture device and it's supposed to be that way, but it's not. It's supposed to be like holy shit, I got to ask you to go to the bathroom. You know, and I yeah. got to do this bathroom business in front of people. It's a different lifestyle and your freedoms are taken away. I think they should punish these people, celebrities anyway, mm -hmm. you know, actors, actresses, uh, like it's uh, like you're a football player. And yes, you can get another job when you get out, but if it's a series, you can't be on for the first two games. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, Felicity isn't part of the plot yet. Yeah. Uh, she's does paying she, a fine. Does it matter if it was a misdemeanor or a felony? Do you? Does she get her vote taken away? I don't know how that works. I always forget. Well, it's also California, so I know the laws are differ state by state. Which is weird, but okay. Yeah. yeah we're so united. These I know. <laughs> right. What so a fantastic. wonderful democracy we have. <laughs> we'll find out if she's, yeah. you know, she's, she seems like one of these people that will get political every four years. We'll see if she has an opinion this time. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> I uh, guess my problem is that it's because I feel like it would have been better to uh, spend more money, but to be like, I'm going to get, I have to do a $50,000 fine, but that fine is specifically going to go to like a minority scholarship. Like, I feel like that actually would right. tangibly help the system as opposed to like, because the way that she should do that on her own, she should get right. out and yeah. say, I'm going to pay for this person's college or somebody's college. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, David Sloan, the second person, not a celebrity who uh, got in trouble four months, he paid. $250,000 for his daughter to get into USC. The fine is $95,000. I wonder if these guys aren't feeling stupid about their um <clears throat> their jail sentence. They're feeling stupid like, wait, Felicity has been 15000 right. and I have to... My kid's an asshole. Well, yeah. you know who's the asshole? The guy you're making the deal with. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. could have told me I'm starting too high. Between 15000 and 250000 yeah. Which one of you got suckered real bad? I know. Augustine. Obviously, Felicity, what's her face, is a good negotiator because yeah. <laughs> she did everything right. She's a desperate housewife. She knows how to deal. She, <laughs> she knows how to cry. Maybe yeah. that helps. <laughs> Augustine Hunues Jr. He's the new person, the third person to be uh, sent to jail over the scandal. He paid three hundred thousand dollars to wow. raise his daughter's SAT scores and get her into USC. Five months in jail. A fine of one hundred thousand dollars. What kind of help are you getting for three hundred thousand dollars? Illegal. I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know, we used to cost a lot more. <laughs> well, the second guy, if you remember, so and same with the third guy, they pretended that their kids were on the polo team. So nobody watches polo, yeah. obviously, right? We can all admit that. <laughs> Make them play. There's the punishment. ESPN 4. You yeah. turn it on. There's these jerk-offs doing water polo. Uh, where do you start? 
<laughs> at the end of the pool, in the middle of the pool, show me. <laughs> and then I blow a whistle and I just see what y'all do. <laughs> Splashing around. You have no idea. That's a good reality show. Take <laughs> yeah. all these kids that were supposed to go to college yeah. and just make them do the sport they were meant yes. to do. Yes. Oh, I, oh, I hear you do yacht racing. <laughs> There's a yacht. Go. What? There's you, buoys. What do you do with them? <laughs> <laughs> You're so right because they can't be like their football players. They're picking up the buoys, <laughs> putting them in their kayaks. <laughs> we got all the buoys. <laughs> no, you go around them, you idiot. But also make their parents do it. Right. Yes. So, so the second person I mentioned, Felicity Huffman, and then David Sloan, he went out, bought this isn't an exaggeration, went out, bought polo equipment, put it in his family pool, and took pictures with his kid in the pool. Oh my God! He's like he's playing polo is... in a... <laughs> you could see that rich people think your average person is a fucking moron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you guys don't recognize pools, yeah. right? This is a, a an ocean to you. Yeah. <laughs> but should we have the barbecue? In that? Well, right. We just bought it. It's a nice barbecue. <laughs> it's marble. Show them. They don't know. You know the, the Olympic duck shaped pool. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like... uh, so the third guy, he was. It was also the polo scam. <laughs> I love uh, but that it's packages, like the polo package. <laughs> you get the lacrosse package. <laughs> <laughs> you you had to you had to Photoshop these pictures and pay more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did they say, well, Felicity Huffman, it's going to cost you two hundred fifty thousand dollars? And she goes, No, that's way too much. Okay, what do you want? I don't know, fifteen thousand. Done. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she's the best negotiator. All right. Well, good job. Uh, this guy, Augustine Hanois, he's a winemaker. He uh, owns a vineyard in Napa Valley as well as Oregon. But okay, can I time out? Because mm -hmm. SAT scores are not the only thing that get you into colleges, especially the privileged kind. You have to go on an interview. They look at your entire uh, curriculum. Yeah, they you look write at an essay. Yeah, you have to you, right. you have to write an essay that's going to stand out out of like thousands of applicants. We do that for free as a bonus. And. <laughs> And you have they look at your after school stuff if you aren't active outside oh, of school. What do you need to know that I did after school? Karate? Here's me and Chuck <laughs> Norris and Bruce Lee. <laughs> In my pool. But shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't we blame the schools? Because this guy was just amping his kids' SAT scores. What was the interview like? Why don't we talk to the people who actually gave the thumbs up on the interview, on the essay? Who the fuck are those people? Throw them in jail, too. Well, they're after the guy. The guy got in big trouble, of course, who there was one main ringleader. But you don't think the schools are in on it also? You don't think right. the schools can look at a kid who doesn't want to go there, who hasn't gotten the grades? There's no yeah. way they got the SAT scores because you can, you can read a person's intellect level. That's what admissions right. is. And so you that whole thing was passed by. Don't the gym teachers have to be on in on it? Whatever they're called, the coaches. Oh yeah, that's true too. Because uh, the coaches your, have to sign off. What's your favorite part of polo? <laughs> uh, the shirts and cologne. <laughs> what? It come in a gift a gift set. Yeah, this is a whole system, and I'm not buying that the schools were just completely out and just you know bamboozled by these people. Because if you are, then what is admissions? Right. Is it just my SAT score because I worked hard on this essay? I wore a thing for my interview. I practiced like. What are you talking about? This isn't just Felicity Huffman and the parents and this one ringleader. He has to have been working with the schools and with other people, like you said, with the coaches, with everything. This is bullshit. But how do you punish the kids who I think also knew about it? Now they don't have to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still millionaires. <laughs> oh, Andrea's saying people from the schools have been arrested. Is that true? All right. I need to hear about those next time. <laughs> we need to know whose name. Well, because right. I feel like a lot of times um, they they throw these people under the bus, which, okay, fine. You know, like parents have been sent to jail for this, but really you got to like keep looking up because systematically this is fucked up. Yep. It's not just the parent who wants to get them in the school, which at the end of the day, that's the best reason. Yeah. You know, like they have the most wonderful intent. I mean, it's terrible and I, it's awful but this guy is making money the schools are fucking bullshit and they're they're not letting other people in so there's like a higher level of fucked up shit that's happening more than these celebrities and their kids and then when you meet you you're at a party with one of these celebrities or one of these winemakers and you can't help but think you meet the 18 19 year old kid and you're like uh, how's college going yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, we don't um, talk about 
Yeah, I mean, you're also ruining your kid's life. Like, I don't know. I know at that age, a lot of a lot of people were already standing up to their parents and not doing what they say, but I was still doing what my parents said. Right. I couldn't yeah. go to colleges because my parents told me I wasn't allowed. Like, I couldn't go to what my mother calls sleepover college. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just because you didn't make the word be dorm doesn't mean I don't know what you're up to. So, yes, I couldn't even apply to those colleges. So, oh, my God. Yeah, your parents are very much, you know, you're under their thumb a lot more than people remember, you know. Right. I was 17 when I started college. Even if I did want to rebel, they're not signing off on these papers. Yeah. You're doing what your parents tell you to do at that age. So it's not fair to the, the kids. Right. Did you go to college? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. Did you? I did go to college. Yeah, I went to. I actually went to college in Connecticut. Um, I was born in New York City, um, but yeah, no. My parents definitely they didn't have like a super huge say, but they definitely were like, "You're not doing. You're not going on the West Coast. You're not doing anything that yeah. involves like a plane ride." Did you? Is that? Did you study nursing? Oh, or isn't something? that? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. they had a hold on you. Yeah, because yeah. they wanted to make sure I was close by, and like obviously, you know, they want to make sure the college is of a good pedigree. Right. But they were still like, no, we don't want to send you all the way over there, and then who knows what will happen. What's the difference? You know what I mean? Yeah. When you think about right. it, right? Yeah. yeah. What uh, What did you study? Uh, I originally was studying biology, um, and then I. Well, uh, I just realized I wasn't really into it. Like I was doing internships every year and stuff, and I finally was like, this, I don't like it. Yeah. And then I real I like I remember I, like had did you have an uh, like a uh, an affinity for it like a like I was always good at it. like I really liked I liked math I liked chemistry and I do like bi biology like I'll still read like like medical books like written like not like textbooks but like medical essays and stuff that oh. are like written by doctors who talk about like surgeries or experiences. Well, good. I have some stuff for you to look at. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did they bring it up? <laughs> did you did you tell any teachers and then they try to keep you? That's when you know that you made the right choice. I told a Spanish teachers like you're four of Spanish. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm gonna drop out this year. She goes, done. Bye. <laughs> Adios. Do you know what that means? Because I don't know how you've been passing. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> that's amazing. <Yeah. laughs> no, nope, that's it. I'm like, you're going to fight me on this, aren't you? <laughs> no. That means no, <laughs> you idiot. That must have been such a hard decision because it's not like you're always fighting yourself to study. You actually like it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I did like it, but I just was getting to a point where like, because my dad works in an emergency room and one time I had to like shadow him. And I like saw like even just a glimpse of the stuff that he did. I was like, "Oh, you're making like real life or death decisions." And I knew I could never do that. Mm. Like, if I were to make a, the wrong decision, someone would die. I knew I could never live with that. And so, but they're making life or death decisions in an emergency room because I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Son, sit down. This is the emergency room. <laughs> Later, follow me when I'm doing real yeah. doctor shit. Uh, Calvin Cato, follow online. The Twitter account is Cato Calvin. The Instagram. Mm -hmm. Is Calvin S. Cato, C A T O. Website is calvincato.com. I know it's a lot of stuff. I'm going to And congratulations, man. <laughs> you know, it didn't fall off yet. You're having fun. I'm not going to judge you. So I'm going to do, well, I will be celibate in terms of I will not have new dick. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey guys! Oh my, oh my God! He just said that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey, hey guys! I'm celibate too. <laughs> Me, oh, Keith yeah. Oh yeah, I'm celibate too. Yeah. Oh, it feels good to get in touch with our emotions. He's not even saying monogamously. Right. This version of celibate. Yeah. No. I'm not gonna have new dick. I'm gonna have all the memories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend's coming over tonight to stay celibate. <laughs> we should have a good time. All right. What's What's the point of any of this? Uh, thank you very much. Spread the word. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>